I hate to send mixed messages. I love to send mixed messages. I hate to send mixed messages. I love to send mixed messages. How you doing? Welcome back to Flowers. Autumn time edition. Last time we were together, it sort of started to feel like we were cruising toward what I feel could be a resolution to things. We, we, we fixed up the situation with Nerine the best we could. We came to a pretty good compromise. We have another secret packed with friends to keep a secret so that nobody ever knows the true culprit. But it looks like everything should calm down. It looks like we're gonna be heading, uh, we have to be heading toward Christmas, I believe. So, I'm kind of thinking like, is this game gonna like stretch on into Christmas? Despite the fact that like Christmas starts, or, or despite the fact that winter starts typically on like December 20th, I think. So it sounds like we may dip a little bit into Christmas, which, which I think would be, you know, it'd probably be a pretty good climax for a volume, I think. So let's find out what we're doing. I don't think we're wrapping it, wrapping it all up today because our girl Yuzu's still got a whole lot going on. She's still got some things that need resolved, but it feels like maybe she's obtaining some of the resolve to start dealing with them. So documents relating to clubs are on the shelf. Everything to do with ceremonies can be found in this draw. I think the drawer, I think they've done that like three or four times now where they mean to say drawer, but they say draw. She thanks me with a warm smile and bows her head to me, averting my eyes from her dazzling smile. I instead look out the window. Yeah, it'd be winter. We're halfway through. Damn, we're just cruising. Yeah, we're ending on Christmas. We're halfway through December, and the temperature difference between inside and out means the window is clouded by condensation obscuring the view. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. You're a teenager. We expect this. I would want you to write. I would want you to write a poem. With this being the second line, just like my heart. I pull a wry smile to myself. How y'all doing? What are you doing here in Iznik? Rika Kun asked me, smile fading slightly. Wait, did they already win? Is it over? I shoot a sideways glance toward where Suo-kun is earnestly listening to Neri's explanation. Oh, they won? I thought I thought that maybe we were going to end on that, that we were going to end on the election. I didn't want to say anything because I, I obviously don't want to like spoilers here, but I thought we were going to end on the election and kind of like, all right, spit it out and then we'll do like the big dun 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 cut to black real quick and you don't get the answer until the next season she squeaked out a victory i mean if that's what we're going for oh uh, well damn she just did it you go girl Staring at the foggy window, I think back on the Council of Nikaya elections and the preceding campaign rally a few days earlier. Which means Yuzu is on the line for some shit. Yo, girl, you gotta cough up some stuff, specifically mentions of you maybe know what's going on with Mayuri. Standing there dignified and calm up on the stage, her mere presence was bound to set tongues a-wagging. But... The moment she introduced herself with a graceful bow, the murmurings immediately died out like a wave withdrawing from the shore. Her voice seemed to reach inside and draw out hidden childhood memories from deep within. Like she was whispering directly into everyone's ear. Aww. 
She spoke of her gratitude and how much help my support had been to her. Many other students who I've helped in one way or another nodded along with her. Then laughter filled the hall as she followed up with a humorous anecdote about our first... <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> they did have a fun first meeting. Back when... Back when Suo was a much more easy to fluster time. I mean, I guess she's still pretty easy to fluster, but back when she was... <laughs> a lot more easy to fluster. Also, Rika's looking solid over here. Like, vice president, like... She looks ready to handle anything but then again already being a class president she's just used to this but like lord suo's taken to this like a glove she just she just looks presidential she's just got it down i aim to carry on and refine the model of student administration president yatsushiro has worked toward during her presidency <laughs> sushi every day and you got my vote she spoke of her vision to further invigorate club activities, her plan to bring new ideas to the events the council currently runs, and her intentions to form a volunteer committee for those two areas. So just kind of like wants to take the ideas that they're doing that she kind of feels are working and just adding her and Rika's own spin to it. Yeah, I would like to take it and, and further improve it. None of her ideas were revolutionary still. It's not a bad move to keep things as they are, considering how calm and content the school is, and the general lack of interest in shaking things up. Yeah, it's generally a pretty good idea. You know, things are kind of going okay now. It's just like, hey, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to make it just like a little bit better. I got some ideas that may, that, that'll make it cooler. However, in order to be elected president, she needed two thirds of the vote. With her safety first, appro first approach, I figured she would only make it to half. So Shirahane was resolute though. She fell silent, gazing out at the audience in the chapel, looking each of them in the eye as though searching for a special someone. Then, <laughs> Oh, she's going to like go into the whole thing. Like, hey, like this is where I started in spring and look at me now. Like I'm here standing tall before you trying to become the president of the Council of Nikaya. Look at where I started. うちoh like she even gives rika the nod in her speech that's real big that's a big moment for rika herself really oh. She lowered her head slightly, trying to keep her emotions in check to fortify that inner dam. Those close to her watched with aching hearts. Her three minutes was up. Having, flat, having finished her speech, she bowed her head to the audience. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> Instantaneously, the chapel was swept up in a huge round of applause that echoed off the high walls. 
the first years who had watched with bated breath, the second years who had been wanting to see if their school would be in safe hands, and the third years who were looking only for some assurance. All of them clapped incessantly. Damn, yeah, she's like, yep. <laughs> y'all, y'all pulled that one off. <laughs> Canny, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even looking at the results. I know. Hearing the same enthusiastic reaction I had once received, I'm convinced. Her speech was, in just about every sense, <laughs> yeah, sorry for just standing here and spacing out for the last six minutes, but you know, it, it happens sometimes. You just gotta forgive me. My hair's my hair's silver at this point. I'm old. You gotta give it up. You know, sometimes the brain. Not where it needs to be. Hi. She must be delighted to have been mentioned as such an integral part of Suokun's campaign. Yeah, like I bet that threw her over the moon to just hear her name and 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 and, and to 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 have like the support that she's offered Suo this whole time to be acknowledged in such a grand fashion. That probably did her soul a lot of good. Rika Kun beams at me, her eyes crinkling as though she's looking into a bright light. Despite her humility, I know it can't have been easy. Or I know it can't have been e I know it can't have been an easy ride, man. There you go. There's that script sometimes getting up under my eyeballs in a weird way. It's not like Neri just waltzed into the position either. Got a point there. I can see that playing. I can see that playing a factor. That is also true. <laughs> oh, that's just uh, <laughs> imagining imagining a Takasaki Aigaki administration. Oh Lord, <laughs> if they could like keep from each other's throats enough to actually implement anything. I mean, I think that's pretty valid. <laughs> Sometimes I just want the same thing twice in a row. That too! Why can't we have more contemporary novels in the library? Again, these are all good ideas. I can just imagine Takasaki-kun marching down the hall while pushing Aigaki-kun's wheelchair. The other council members hurrying after her like a senior dictator. <laughs> like a senior doctor on her I mean, dictator kind of makes sense. I can put that on them. I can see that. Uh, but like a senior doctor on her hospital rounds. Hang on. It's a bit late now, but it occurs to me that Suokun's pledges didn't mention anything about the library, oddly enough. I, well, I mean... I think everybody knows that, like, she's the, yeah, she's the fairy of the library. I think everybody knows that, like, you know, that's her thing. And she probably didn't want to come off as, like, wanting this position in any way that might come off as, 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 as her, you know, being, having, having any kind of self-interest in that way. So that's kind of where I imagine that comes from. Speak of the devil. Though it's not like we were gossiping exactly. The subject of our conversation makes her way over to us. I inform her. When we tell her our ideas for their pledges, it must have conjured a funny image for her too, as she covers her mouth with her hand and bites back a laugh. <laughs> 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 
Exactly. <laughs> Always so pragmatic. She looks at me blankly for a moment, then blinks. <laughs> of course she didn't! She's so damn pure, of course! It was never even in her brain that she could, like, make some kind of pledge to do something for the library. She just never thought of it. Of course she's too perfect! She's pure as the driven snow! Too self-serve- No, she just literally didn't think of it! Oh my god, you're- Stop being so perfect! Uh-oh. Speaking of which... I think you got some information for me, do you not? She trails off, her body suddenly tensing up. Then she looks me dead in the eye, as though seeing straight through my miserable base in herself. Ooh, man, this. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, uh, <laughs> our promise to take a bath together? Sure. <laughs> I cave under the intensity of that look. Let's go right now! Let's go! <laughs> Though she's still glaring at me, her cheeks are flushed and her gaze is no longer as sharp. Oh, are you gonna back out on this? You can't back out on this. This is so, like, why is she being so weird about this? Like, you told her you could do, like, you would do it. She, like, put herself through all this. You've got to do it now. As she looks up at me, I feel terribly small. You should. Yeah, she's, like, in the right here. Sorry, Yuzu. Like, I am always going to be the one to jump to defend you here, but I think... Like, if you, like, pull the rug from under her at this point, then you don't cough it up. I had promised to pass on the words to her. It's too late now, but I regret ever making that promise. The mystery at the heart of this academy. God, what? What could it even be? Because none of the mysteries really, like, make any sense if we're tying them together to try to put together, like, a bigger puzzle. Mm. However, getting closer to the mystery will mean getting closer to the Earth than the heavens. And that means... I mean, yeah, she probably is. She points over the direction of the general clerk and Nerine Komikado. Whoop, gonna just slip on out of here? I go over to where the two are talking. Taking the documents the clerk holds out to me, I ask her what's up. It's a pressing matter. What is our pressing matter? Okay, so there's like a grace period to like hand things over and kind of teach them how all of this gets run. So, so, so she's still in charge. I guess my mind had been so filled with thoughts of the words of succession and all the hardships that will befall that will befall her even if it goes smoothly that i forgot about everything else among the events the council runs the noel christmas celebrations are some of the most important 
God, it was like God thinking of it now. It was actually around Christmas last year when I like I like I started playing the games around probably like December 10th or so. But I know that like I took a break during Christmas and I was like close to the end of of, of the first game. So it's kind of like wrapping around to Christmas end game feels a little weird. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. I'm in. I'm in. I love me a good nog. What you sewing for? Are you sad that that we're not president and vice president no more? But yeah, there you go. That's why not. Uh, uh what? She's just off her game in a major way right now. You like it, some eggnog? You strike me as an eggnog fan. Mix together sugar and egg yolks. Mi mix, mix together sugar and egg yolks in a heated bowl. Then, when the mixture is nice and foamy, add milk and a dash of cinnamon for flavor. It's drunk in North America during Christmas and New Year, and it's also a traditional drink at the economy's end of the year celebrations. I mean, there's, there's alcoholic varieties as well, but I am just as okay with a normal non-alcoholic nog. I've got nog on the noggin now. I can taste it, but it's lit. Do they even sell eggnog? in like the summer months, cause it's like June 20th here. And I don't know if you can even find eggnog out of season like that. I wonder if that's just something that only like they start spinning it up in October. They like the, <laughs> the eggnog factory fires up in October. It's like, all right, it's our time to shine. We've got two months, let's do it. Although she attempts to smile, it's obvious from her tense expression that she's forcing it. The clerk and I are both perplexed. You dealing with, she dealing with something right now. I feel like she's feeling kind of weird about all of this. Yeah, she really is. She's certainly, like, dealing with a lot if the end of that previous chapter is to, uh, be any indication. Well, I mean, she kind of came in and said that she did a thing that, I mean, even though we know she said she didn't do it, if somebody comes in and they're that adamant about it. After all, she confessed to the crime herself. The council clerk's perspective is probably clouded by her own guilt, but... Uh-huh, it's you. Nettie doesn't have an axe to grind with the members of the Council of Nikaya. She only grew distant when I joined the conversation. She don't know what she's feeling right now, and she doesn't know how to handle it. Looking over to where my best friend is talking to Suokun, wearing her usual gentle smile, I feel something inside me start to shift. We're bringing it back. The rays of the setting sun fill the chapel along with the lilting notes of the Tota Plucra S. I don't know how to pronounce that. A hymn for the Virgin Mary. Listening to Nettie's familiar voice, my heart is soothed by the unchanging melody, tone, and rhythm. 
The gift I inherited from my mother means that I can generally learn something after seeing or experiencing it just once. Having something inspire me with the same feeling of freshness, even when I've already experienced it before, therefore lends it new value. Cooking, photography, singing. I mean, yeah, that, that makes sense. Being able to pick up things so quickly means I grow bored of them equally fast. No matter how many times I hear her sing this song, though, I never tire of it. Although I do experience a sense of deja vu, I could still listen to it forever. I'll get right on that. Let me pull up this lyric sheet here. The singing ceases and my mouth curves up into a smile as she utters an instruction in line with what I had just been thinking. I inadvertently voice my disappointment at the end of her song. Nettie gives me a little side eye then... Yeah, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> with that, she exits the chapel as though seeking to avoid my gaze. No, it's more than that. She's very clearly putting a distance between us. <laughs> the Choral Club will perform together as a choir at Christmas Mass. I tried to approach Nettie for some guidance, but... Good lord, yeah! She's just like hard avoiding you now. At least she actually responded to me, responded to me that time. I tried asking her if I'd done something wrong. Oh, he's trying really hard to get any kind of interaction here, and it's just not working. Ugh. Although her eyes seemed desperate to convey something, she gracefully walked away from me without saying a word. Oh. The sharp-eared Rika-kun picks up on my whisper and now blinks at me innocently. It's a natural question, but to me, to us, those silver slippers instead instead equal protection the pinky promise we made as kids right now no one's coming to save me no matter how many times i click my heels She glances back at the chapel entrance, through which Nettie has since left. She's sharp, although... Yeah, very clearly! Well, it's, it's a little complicated. Uh, maybe it's because I came on to her too strong. Chuckling at her forthright question, I find myself falling back into old habits. Man, a big fight! Just knock down, drag out, fight! I got stone cold stunnered through the <laughs> through the altar over there. We had to replace everything. <laughs> okay, okay, Yuzu, I need you to, I need you to. Rain it in a little bit. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's all you need to do. Just set the mood. Get some candles, some rose petals on the bed. Boom, just shove her on down. I think things will work out just fine. Playing the stereotypical dandy, I reach out and tease her braids with a finger. For a moment, she seems dazed, then. <laughs> you 
can't lie in God's house? <laughs> she bats at my chest and I smile, genuinely moved by her kindness. that she's pissed at you. I think she's just really confused and afraid of all of these feelings and she is conflicted about what she wants and needs to do because to all other observers right now, you are still very much in a relationship with Ringo. And I don't know that she knows how to handle that right now. Especially considering that maybe she's kind of like giving her feelings a real thought here and and, and 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 coming to a conclusion that maybe like uh oh maybe there is something there and i'm just kind of like been blind to it you know she's she's gone through a lot don't say that rika please i'm oh. I can't help but chuckle at the irony, known only to me in her choice of that masculine word. Man! Oh, God. Being... Being... Being Yuzuriha Yatsushiro is suffering. Oh! Man, I feel that. Oh, I hate that I feel that so much. Stop! Stop! I need you to stop! I need you to cease the sounds that are coming out of your whole mouth! Mouth hole! Whole mouth! Your whole mouth! Stop saying those things with your whole mouth, or even your half mouth! I haven't kept my promise to Suokun. I'm even considering reneging on it entirely. Oh, damn! Smiling as she attempts to defend me, I cut her off. Ooh. I shouldn't be speaking of the devil in a church. Poor Rika-kun looks, like looks at a loss for words. I reach out to wind a finger through her luscious braids. Although she flushes, she doesn't flinch or pull back from me. Out of consideration for me, I suppose. When Ringo and I had first gotten together, it was like the air between Nettie and I had stagnated, though no one but us could sense it. Sure, there had been a sense of discomposure, but she hadn't let anything like it show in her language or behavior which is probably why the rest of the school had felt sorry for her and taken a more outwardly hostile stance toward me and Ringo on her behalf. Why is she avoiding me now? <laughs> Gazing at the image of Christ with his eyes closed, I let out a long sigh. There ain't no easy answers to this, girl. Good lord, there's there's nothing. There there's no easy answer for anything that's going on right now. Like this is a situation and I hate it, but it's the unfortunate like reality, like feelings are going to have to be I mean, I I just now looked at the the words on screen. You can't make an omelet without cracking eggs. Like somebody's going to have to get their feelings hurt. Like that's just that just be life sometimes and it's all in how you handle that afterwards it's how you handle having to do that uh it's all in how you follow it up thinking of a line from a movie all the king's men i give my frying pan a shake <laughs> To cook it more effectively, I add some mayonnaise to the mixture when I was... I've never done that. Is that a thing you can do with an omelet? I've never... I don't know that I've ever put mayonnaise in an omelet. I'm going to have to do that because I'm absolutely terrible with regards to making omelets. I can make fantastic scrambled eggs, 
But if, if you want an omelet, I am the last person you want to come to for that. Maybe I just haven't been putting mayonnaise in it. Apparently it stops it from hardening as soon as it's on the heat and makes the egg nice and fluffy, but... Shaking the pan again, I use a pair of long chopsticks to stir the to stir the pre-omelet mixture of egg, cream, butter, mayo, and pepper. My eyes are fixed on a pale yellow liquid in the pan. But my mind's eye sees only her. When I think about why she's avoiding me, my chest aches unbearably. The scariest vision of the future is one where this leads to a slow decoupling from her. It's a tale as old as time. A pair of BFFs go off on their separate ways to university. They can't be bothered to call each other and gradually stop meeting in person. The relationship dying a slow but natural death. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Definitely had that happen with a number of people. Oh. Feeling down about the situation, I tried totting up her negative qualities in an attempt to reduce my feelings for her. Totting. Now there's a word. I'm not going to say that that's one of the made up words that, that the localization people made up, like the other ones that we've had to point out through over the course of of this playthrough. Totting does sound like something that, that, that could mean like ratcheting or turning up or, or, or emphasizing. Don't ask me why I think that. It's just that's what I felt like saying in the moment. And you have to understand that I'm a creature who rarely thinks about anything that's coming out of my mouth. So that's like what you're coming to these playthroughs for is words that are flying out of my dumb whole mouth or mouth hole. See what I did there? That was a callback. That was a very, very funny thing that I just did there. Why am I not YouTube famous? She's kind to everyone, which leads to indecisiveness. She takes too long doing her hair in the mornings. That kind of thing. I don't think any of these things are going to make you hate her. But even when I focus on her shortcomings, not one of them truly spoils the whole. In fact, they simply serve to shine an even brighter light on her strengths. <laughs> ah! A shout in my ear directs my gaze from my inner thoughts back to my omelet. The yellow mixture is burned, darkening to a shade somewhere between brown and black. See, I don't burn omelets. I know, I know how to get them to where they need to be. I know like what temperature to cook them at. I know how long to cook them. It's the whole like flipping it and folding it nonsense that just kind of went well. This all fell apart. Lifting the pan off the heat, I slide the blackened former omelet onto a plate. The burned scent emanating from its charred remains seems to represent my inner anguish. <sighs> this is Ichigo or Ringo. She appears around me at the plate. Ichigo, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Looking into her friendly, smiling face, I tell her it was supposed to be an omelet. I guess as much from the fact that they both showed up at cooking club today, but it looks like the sisters have been... Oh, I'm so happy. Ringo is leaning forward, reading the disaster before me. Regarding the disaster before me. She declares, beckoning her sister over. <laughs> yes, I messed up, egg rolls. <laughs> Aww. They're back to, like, interacting in the right and left ear now. There's absolutely nothing that feels off about their interactions. They've definitely made up. Then... Hey, there you go! Previously, I'd felt everyone tense up whenever I spoke to Ringo out in the open, but now things are back to how they were before that. Ichigo Sasaki kun is one smart cookie. Yuzuri 
<laughs> Are you so despondent over your really bad omelet? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's still egg. If it's just a little overdone, it's not like it's still edible. I mean, that would probably save it. I mean, that's probably about all you can do. Ichigo-kun flaps her hand in front of her face, seemingly disgusted by her sister's suggestion. It's a silly little back and forth. Using my special skill, I peer through Ichigo-kun's windows. You're hiding something. Huh? Are we not good? Waving her arms around exaggeratedly, she hurriedly cuts me off. Perhaps she thought I was going to bring up the werewolf. Maybe some cream? I go along with her obvious attempt to change the subject. Christmas sandwiches, you know? What would a Christmas sandwich be? Uh, don't answer that. It, there's probably a thing called a Christmas sandwich and I'm just making myself sound like a gigantic tool bag. Even I can't mess up a sandwich. Yo, ham and avocado? That's a, that's a real good combination. They're both grinning broadly at our banter. The cooking club room is filled with laughing voices as I, continu as I continue working on my chosen dish. Except, as I look across the room, there's just one person who's standing awkwardly apart. Yeah, oh, like, uh, she's not gonna hide it, is she? She's not gonna kind of sit here and play nice. She's gonna kind of make it be known that she's uh, not your biggest fan right now. <laughs> Suo is a woman of grace, but I think that she's also gained enough of a backbone at this point that I think that she's capable of being upset at somebody for reneging on a deal. She must have caught my glance as her eyes also flick in Suo-kun's direction. Not the best time. Why wouldn't I want to make an omelet with my girlfriend? I stop Ichigo kun before she can call out to her. Well, Ringo asks, ever perceptive. For a moment, I'm, I'm unsure of how to answer then. Oh, you're not totally gonna back out. You can't be... No, come on. Come on, Yuzu. You can't be a prick about this. This girl put herself through so much to finally be at this position, and you're just gonna... Nah, I don't think we can allow this. I love Yuzu, but even I'm not letting her off the hook for this. It's like, no, no, no this will actually make you a gigantic coward. <laughs> I settle on sharing a fragment of the truth. Nah, I don't- I think this is much bigger than anything you're gonna be able to handle. It's hardly a misunderstanding. It's very clear-cut. I mean... I think from a lot of people's perspective, it might look like you lied. Because, you know, you were like, hey... Go do this really impossible thing that I just set out before you because my name is Kaguya-sama. Uh, go do that. Go do this impossible thing. Uh, oh no, you did the impossible thing and now I've got to hold up my... Uh-oh. Uh-oh! 
Ringo repeats the word and it burrows its way into my ears. The twins exchange a guilty look, but I'm distracted by the bleakness in Suokun's eyes as she stares at me. Inside my heart, I call out for my best friend. Oh. You can't get away from yourself by moving from one place to another. An Ernest Hemingway quote runs through my mind. Wiping the fog from the glass, I gaze out the window. I'm scarcely seeing the scenery outside, though. It's like my feelings for Nettie have congealed to form a film over my eyes. What should I do? How could I face up to Nerine Komikado? My heart is torn with conflicting emotions merely from having to act differently toward me. Even though I'm dating Ringo, is the fact that my heart is in such turmoil itself a betrayal of her? However, I think that this is just all real complicated emotions and everybody's gonna kinda need time to settle. Um, I think Nerine kind of like needing a little time alone after kind of like going through all of this and maybe like trying to figure out her own feelings, you know, on top of like, well, if you're going to be with Ringo, that's going to be something that she has to kind of accept. Uh, I think that that's kind of like becoming a much bigger thing for her than she realized. I can't imagine cutting her off and going our separate ways, as separate people. At some point along the way, we blended together like twins sharing one soul. Having finished dancing, my body is rapidly losing heat. Strangely distanced from myself, I objectively observe how my sweat is cooling me down and that I might catch a cold. Hearing the quiet pad of footsteps across the otherwise silent room, the film is abruptly wiped from my eyes. I recognize those footsteps. I've never thought that in my life. I've never thought once. I know exactly who that is by the sound of their shoes approaching. Maybe if they wore something like gigantic docks. Like, because I that was me for a long time. It's like, I'm that person, you know, Doc Bartons. Like, okay, that's pretty. You know, that's probably going to be um, a unique sound on, on most hard floors. Um, but then... A lot of my friends and I like wore those in school, so it's just like I don't know. Hey, sister, got some some advice for us? Realizing she's come back to lock up and is about to speak to me, I beat her to the punch. Uh, sorry for kind of putting you in a real bad pickle there for a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Sister Basquiat shakes her head. For a moment, I'm wary, thinking she did what I thinking she did what I do, and peered into the room behind my eyes. Then I smirked to myself, realizing how angsty I must have looked staring out the window. Uh huh. Her smile fades at the immediacy of my response. I peek into her own windows. As usual, the curtains are shut tight. Why is she so guarded? That's interesting. We're spending all, we, 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 we heard that a number of times, especially in this volume of that, like she is very, very like locked up. Just interesting. I don't, I'm not that I think that there's anything malicious about it. I mean, she's an adult and she's probably a bit more complicated. For a second, I have no idea what she's talking about. A moment later, I realize she's referring to the thing with dorm mother Katabami. <laughs> she always slips up and calls her Tama. I 
want to meet Dorm Mother Katablami. She seems nice. Her smile could melt even the iciest of hearts. A smile like that would have moved me when I was younger. Yeah, that's interesting. She's pretty good at gauging people by looking into their eyes, but she can't get anything from Dahlia. I smile wryly. The curtains pulled across her eyes. All fixed. All better. Later. I'm momentarily flustered. It's impossible to get a read on her emotions. She's similar to me, and I don't like that, but... Oh! Let's go! Let's ask this question again. I've thrown her. I see the curtains twitch, but I still can't see into the room. Nah, I don't think that's it. Deep within her eyes, I feel like I catch a glimpse of something holy yet terrifying. Something I shouldn't have seen. As I bow my head to her and take my leave, I see her cross herself. I can almost see an image of my best friend superimposed on her, chilling my frozen body even further. Interesting. What are you hiding, my dear Dahlia? Muttering to myself, I scroll through the photos on my camera. Trying to talk about homosexuality with a devoutly Christian nun had, de had definitely been the wrong call. In my distraction, I ended, up, um, I ended up imagining some pretty impolite things. I utter a silent apology as I gaze at my collection of scenic photos, then... As though traveling back in time to the day it was taken, I arrive at a photo of me and Nettie. A photo from when I won the Council of Nikaya elections, kindly taken by the clerk. Even though it was only a year earlier, I feel like a scarily long... It feels like a scarily long time ago. In the photo, I'm frowning at something behind the camera woman while Nettie appears to be smiling joyously at the same thing. What is it? I have a photographic memory, yet I can't remember this. I hadn't reacted openly to it, but her instruction for us to stand closer together had really agitated me. Touching Nettie's shoulder, her body, in front of everyone had really thrown me for a loop. Even though I always enjoyed the way our bodies would touch when the two of us sat chatting together, there in the library beneath the slanting rays of the dying sun, staring out at this image of my best friend, I feel completely alone. Like the tin woodman without his heart, I feel a chasm yawning open in my chest. Hello! Feeling like I'm still in a dream, I turn sluggishly to the direction of the voice. How's it going? Shidori! There's no affection to her smile as she nods. While she never really beams, her smile still somehow reminds me of Nettie's. She looks over at the librarian's desk. The sound of Suo Shirahane's name startles me. Yet another girl I'm having issues with. Now 
She stares intently at the camera in my hands, but shakes her head when I hold it out to her. How do you mean? How do you- Oh my god! <laughs> Get out of here! She worded it exactly the same way! <laughs> Seeing traces of Neri in her smiling face, I gently stroke my camera. It's like another thing that you kind of just glommed onto just to kind of like shape your personality to what other people thought you should be. Internally, I reflect on how heavy the equipment is and how it generally seems as a ma generally seen as a masculine hobby. Oh. Shaking my head, I tell her that it was quite the opposite. Oh, I see. I see where you're going with this. Yep. Our memories paint things in either a better or worse... Uh, our, I, our memories paint things in either a better or worse light than reality. That still applies to me, even with my photographic memory. I'd never spoken about this to anyone before. The twilight room, the ghost of Neri, the girl before me, who made me unusually loose-lipped. Despite the heavy confession I just laid on her, she's still smiling at me in a way that reminds me of Neri. Oh. oh, look at this. We're bonding. Realizing that she's chosen to share something private and personal with me, I sit up straight and look her in the eye. Reminds me of my own father. Recover? That word sticks out to me, but it would be insensitive to interrupt. I decide not to ask. I mean, as normal as it can be at like a very upper crust all or all girls school where you literally basically have the best of everything, except we don't have Nintendo or air conditioning. 
The gentle rays of the sun soften her smile and I find myself nodding along unconsciously. My Amitye partner taught me how to see things that way, she tells me. Aww. From her bright response, the way she's behaving, I realize that Takasaki-kun is trying to get closer to me. Just like her Amitye partner once did for her. Her sharing the secrets of her past with me is proof of that. Oh. She's finally got some place to just like say it and not feel weird. Somebody there to finally like and 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 and, and Chidori gets to like finally kind of probably feel like somebody finally depending on her. I mean other than Erica. Somebody like depending on her like coming to her like initiating this kind of uh, interaction with her is, is is probably a big thing for her as well so oh. polycule time let's go ringo and nerine polycule we're doing it ah poop She places her index finger to her perfectly formed lips, giving my question serious consideration. Her gaze grows sharper than usual, like she's regarding something with disdain. Equal value. They're both so important to me. It's never even... It, it, I've never thought to compare them, but I suppose that implication was buried in my question. It's such poop advice! I hate... I hate when somebody says, follow your heart. It's the stupidest bullshit nothing advice ever. Get out of here, Chidori. No more advice from you. I know what she's saying, but it's just like, it doesn't help. I always hate it when people say that, because I feel like when people say that, they're saying it in the most non-committal, I don't really want to think about this. I just want to tell you something that sounds nice and flowery. And that's always been how that's always come off to me. And anybody that's ever said that to me, it's just come off as just so, I want out of this conversation, so I'm just going to say the thing that sounds really nice. I don't think Chidori's doing that. I don't think, I, I don't even think Chidori, like, like, I, I believe she actually fully believes that like, you know, go with your heart is like good advice. So I don't think she's sitting here trying to get out of a conversation or that she didn't want to have or didn't want to deal with the situation at all. It's more just like my own, my own experience with that phrase is just, ugh. hold on. My eyes just rolled out of my head. But I understand where Chidori is coming from with it and what it might mean in this situation. You can't please everyone. We were just goes back to you can't make an omelet without breaking an egg. Like, again, somebody in this situation, they're gonna get temporarily hurt, and it's all in how you handle that afterward, you know. But but things can't continue the way they are, obviously. There you go, that's some, that's some good, tangible advice. Takasagi-kun's answer reminds me of a line from my favorite movie. She has every right to mess up her life. Those words are from Amelie. Yep, you've just kind of got to do it. You've got to pull the trigger one way or the other on this whole, like, which is it? After thanking her, I ask if it's okay to take a photo. She nods obligingly. It's such a Yaigaki-kun thing to say. I can't help but smirk. Fos focusing in on her beautiful figure, set aglow by the setting sun, I, ch I click the shutter. 
A memory is added to the gaping hole inside me, helping to fill it up ever so slightly. That single photo warms me and lends me the resolve to face up to those girls. I've called Ringo Sasaki out to the St. Joseph both to celebrate her sprain being fully healed and to tell her how I feel. Oh boy. Oh boy. But you know what? We've been going for an hour now and I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. So we will find out next time. <laughs> oh, I'm so mean, I'm so awful. We will find out next time. The ending to the great Ringo versus Nerine conundrum. I think it's finally happening. I am in suspense. I get to just keep going after this, but you gotta wait 24 hours. Poor you. But hey, as always, thanks so much for coming out and I appreciate it. I hope you have a nice rest of your whatever, wherever it is you are, and we will catch you right here next time. So bye.